How about it? Hit me with a kiss. It's number one. The name of this category is A Good Year to Land on the Moon. And this one's going to be worth $1,000. Get your eyes focused on the screen. Here we go. The people who moved to California in 1849 to seek a fortune in gold came to be known as 49ers. The 69ers. Hmm, what were those boys doing on the moon anyway? Okay. Here's the category. This go down with the brothers Doppler. You get this one right, you got 2,000 bucks coming at you. Now imagine if your science teacher knew the Bee Gees personally and used them in demonstrations to your class. According to the Doppler effect, if they were moving toward you, their voices would get higher in pitch, bassier in timbre, lower in pitch, or arpeggio. They'd sound higher in pitch. Yeah, with the Bee Gees, you wouldn't think that's possible, but it is. All right, let's see what we're doing here. What a bunch of popo. The amount on the table is three grand. The Edgar Allan Poe story, Murders in the Rue Morgue, has a rather unusual twist. Tell me which character would be the best choice to play the murderer in a movie version of the story. Lassie from Lassie Come Home, Elsa from Born Free, Willie from Free Willie, or Clyde from Every Which Way But... Oh, go for it! You know what you could have picked? You could have picked this. Uh, Look, just get his agent on the phone. I've got to have Clyde for this part. In Murders in the Room Morgue, the murderer was an orangutan. And so was Clyde. Four. The category behind this question is dog food and Italian cuisine. A right answer will get you two G's for this question. Hey, you remember that dog food commercial where the dog chases around a miniature covered wagon? If the little covered wagon broke a wheel, which type of pasta could they possibly use to replace the wheel and stay ahead of the dog? Farfalli. It's all yours. Whoa. Whoa! Should have picked this. Ruta. They're shaped like wagon wheels. Of course, if you're going to use them on the wagon, you don't want to boil them first. Okay, pick a category. Uh-oh, West Truck Licks Nine More. It's time for a ticklish pesto. This gibberish questions category is biblical names and crappy poetry. Opening value on this gibberish question, 5,000 bucks. Okay, now remember, you don't have all the time in the world here. The less time you take, the more money you make. Now tell me, with what piece of greeting card poetry does this rhyme? Moses, card dead. Go for it. Type in your answer and hit... And you know, I always thought violets were violet. Go figure. Kid songs are so confusing. Ba -ba -bum. Number six, it's number six, it's next up hair. And it looks like you can win a thousand greenbacks for this one. Okay, let's get this ball rolling. Which of the following insect dwellings is the beehive? Three feet high and full of that sticky honey. Zaba dooba dabbin, question seven. This one's gonna be Juicy Dogs. I'm paying out $2,000 if you get this one right. Flight attendants, prepare for takeoff. If the always blue Huckleberry Hound were made of blue litmus paper and were dropped into a giant glass of orange juice, what color would he be when he climbed out? It's all yours. Yellow? Uh, only if he drank all the juice and then for a few days no one took him for his little walkie. In case you're curious about the correct answer, citric acid turns blue litmus paper red. But trust me, you don't want to see what happens to a blue dog on acid. Okay, pick... The category, melanoma and the end of time. Okay, this one might be a toughie. It's worth 3,000 bucks. Okay, get your fingers ready. Let's get busy. Word gets out that the sun is about to be extinguished. About how much tanny? Eight minutes. At light speed, the sun is eight minutes away. 
Eight minutes also happens to be the exact amount of time necessary to review all of the interesting Bicentennial Minutes broadcast in the mid-70s. Just thought you'd like to know. The category is those wacky royals. And we will pay out $3,000 for this one. Hang on tight, because here we go. Which is the best National Enquirer headline for a factually correct story about Macbeth? Secret out. Simon. That's all you. How about player makes bad guess, loses big bucks? And here's the right answer. C-section baby grows up, saves Scotland. And on the back page, it says they spotted Ophelia in Las Vegas. The name of this category is Primary Colors and Inappropriate Teaching Methods. Okay, shouldn't be too tough. This question's going to be worth a grand. For this question, let's say you're an art teacher and you want to teach your students about primary colors. You take your class into the washroom and ask them to observe as you urinate into a toilet filled with blue water. To the it's now green. Uh, hey teacher, can we go back to finger painting now? We've got 10 questions down, and for 10 more, we're going on to round two. <laughs> now, we are one round away from the jack attack, and all the questions in this round are going to be worth more than a round one. So pay attention, and let's do it. Okay. And now, 11. The category behind this question is questions you forgot you knew. And if you can figure this one out, I can pay you 4000 bucks. Hope you're ready, because here's one coming at you. Who shot JR? Pamela Barnes Ewing, Kristen Shepard, Miss Ellie, or Sue Ellen Shepard Ewing? It's all yours. No, she was too busy dreaming up entire seasons to shoot anybody. Too bad you didn't pick this. Pregnant with JR's child, Sue Ellen's sister shot JR. Of course, a better question might be why did anyone care? All right, come on, hit me. We need a category. Uh-oh, best butts fits mine, whore. Once again, it's time for a Snickerclish restroom. The category for this gibberish question, sayings that have annoyed America. And if you're really fast, you can get up to 10,000 bucks for this gibberish question. Now, you're going to have about 30 seconds to solve this puzzle, but I'm going to be taking a little bit of money away every second and a half. Now, you know there's no screwing your neighbor in this kind of a question. You ready to untangle some gibberish? Let's do it. What does this rhyme with? Well, jive, golin, man, pie, ramp, smet, pup. It's from a commercial. Wait, wait, I, I don't it, Where's the beef? Is that right? Okay, this is a commercial featuring an elderly woman. Wait a second. Where's the beef? That's an elderly woman. This game is lame. Commercial, elderly woman, and she's lying prostrate on the ball. Okay, let's see what you got. Start typing. Oh, a valiant effort. You you almost got it, but the, uh, the, 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 the main word there is almost. Okay, let's see if this helps. Kelp, jive, go. It was from a commercial for Medic Alert, featuring some of the best acting on television today. How about it? Question 13. Here's the category. I got your fairy tale right here. And this one's gonna be worth $2,000. Okay, we're coming at you. Heads up. Hey, what actually happens at the end of Aesop's fable, The Boy Who Cried Wolf? A wolf eats the boy's sheep, the boy... Go. That's it, it's yours, baby. A wolf eats the sheep. Okay. It's question 14. All right, let's see what we're doing here. Rocky Mountain Low. It's going to be worth $4,000. Okay, get yourself set. It's time. Rocky Mountain oysters are not oysters at all. Colloquially speaking, what are they? Pig bull balls. That's right, bull's testicles, a fine delicacy, and wouldn't you like to know what comes with that order? All right, come. Uh-oh, test nut slick crime store. Once again, it's time for a flicker fish no scum. 
right, now here's your category for this gibberish question. Turn that letter, sister. We're in round two, so this gibberish question is going to start off at $10,000. Okay, now remember, the faster you solve this puzzle, the more money you win. Okay, stand by with what song lyric does this rhyme, and don't let the punctuation throw you off. Go, you banner. Bow. Want to buy for ease? It's a song about a guy with a banjo. He's got a banjo and he travels with it on his knee. Last hint, he doesn't want anyone to cry. Which is what you'll be doing in a few seconds if you don't hurry up. Okay, let's see if you know it. Type in your... Sweet. Go, you banner, I want to buy for ease. Did you ever think about this? Maybe Susanna's upset because she loves the guy, but his incessant banjo playing is driving her up the wall. Uh. Question number 16. And I like it too. The category is Greek cooking with an attitude. Ah, you're gonna be pretty good if you get this one. It's worth 6,000 bucks. Get ready to buzz, cause here it comes. If Zorba the Greek were to add a healthy dose of arrogance and pride to his mixture of mashed chickpeas, tahini, oil, lemon juice, and garlic, what might he call his new gastronomic creation? Self-conscious. There's no excuse for couscous. Now the correct answer is... Hubris is one of those fatal flaws from Greek tragedy. Hummus is often a fatal flaw for first dates. My dear, could I offer you a mint? How about it? Jiggy Jack is gone, let me hear you scream. It's question 17. This one's gonna be, maybe you do know Jack. This question's gonna be worth $2,001 bills. All right, maybe you do know a few of them. Let's find out. Which of the following is not a famous type of jack? A deposit of tiny ice crystals, a handheld pneumatic machine for drilling, a solid food made from pressed milk curds, or a prosthetic scrotum? It's all yours. You never heard of Jack Frost? Who's been nipping at your nose? Here's what you should have guessed. A phony scrotum, which is not a famous jack. It's really more of a sack. All right, come on, hit me. We need a... 18, what the slay clean? Number 18. Next up, what the hell is a tuffet? A right answer will get you two Gs for this question. Okay, hang tight. Put your fingers on your buzzers. Here's the question. Now tell me, which of these comes closest to describing what Miss Muffet was eating when that spider came along? Creamy River, cottage cheese, with oh, Go for it. Cottage cheese. <laughs> Also known as curds and whey. Okay, pick a category. The category Super Pickup Lines. And we are talking 4,000 big ones. Okay, get your fingers ready, let's get busy. If Superman were to employ Marlowe's mighty line in an attempt to pick up Wonder Woman, what would he be using? A chain used to secure the Tower of London, a special kind of hemp used on ships, a scenery rope used in Elizabethan theaters, or a form of blank verse poetry? It's all yours. What have you been smoking? And let's see the correct answer. Christopher Marlowe used it to usher in the great age of Elizabethan drama. Now I think Superman was using the poetry in the hopes of getting Wonder Woman to spend a little lasso time with him. How about you? Uh, question number 20. The name of this category is projectile commenting. 6,000 bucks is riding on this one. Let's suppose the citizens of Peoria, Illinois build a rocket and fill it with people who are guilty of publicly uttering the cliche, but will it play in Peoria? Now the plan is to send the rocket straight into the sun. When should the citizens of Peoria launch their rocket if they want to wait until the earth is closest to the sun? Oh, go January 3rd, and that is generally the day when the earth is closest to the sun. And interestingly enough, it's also National Skin Cancer Day. 
No, I'm just kidding. All right, come on, hit me. Jack attack time. As soon as you see two words on the screen that go together, buzz in. Do oh, you already got the rules down, huh? Let's not waste time. Match on this. The star was a real animal. I remember that clue. Put your finger on your buzzer. See what kind of an animal you are. right you could be at zero right now and still feel like you played a lousy game so don't sweat it cuz you don't know jack excellent show everybody hey um cookie